in this topic, one of the things that we're doing is looking at uh, different causes of uh, genetic diversity or genetic variation in organisms. We've already seen that meiosis generates uh, genetic variation in gametes and um, the random fertilization of gametes leads to further um, genetic variation in, in the offspring formed. Uh, one of the other sources of variation is uh, mutation. We've already looked at um, gene mutation. What we're going to do now is have a look at chromosome mutation and what, what that refers to is um, changes in the in the number of of chromosomes that you find within organisms. The the specific example that, that we're going to look at is called uh, non disjunction. So non disjunction is a is a process that occurs within meiosis cell division that ultimately is going to lead to uh, a different number of, of chromosomes within, uh, within an organism. Um, uh, so to start off with, uh, let's have a look at just one uh, bivalent. This process of non-disjunction affects uh, a bivalent within meiosis cell division. If we start off then with uh, looking at parent cell, and the, the example I'm going to give, we don't have to know specific examples, but I'm going to talk about an example, is how non-disjunction can lead to Down syndrome in, uh, in humans. It, it only affects one specific um, pair of homologous chromosomes, and it's the 21st uh, pair of chromosomes. Um, and it doesn't affect any of the other, any of the other uh, 22 pairs of chromosomes. Um, and I'm just going to draw this, this uh, chromosome pair 21. So if we look at chromosome pair 21 within the parent cell, we know that as we start to roll through meiosis cell division, what this cell has to do First of all, is run through interphase, and we know then that each of those uh, pairs of chromosomes will undergo semi-conservative replication. If we just fast forward and now say that we're looking at um, the cell in meiosis one, meiosis cell division, and we've just fast forwarded straight to metaphase one. And so now we can have a look at the bivalence, the bivalent rather, as it's arranged itself at the equator. So let's just say for argument's sake, we have the homologous chromosomes, the bivalent arranged as it is. If we had the paternal chromosome on the other side, the maternal, vice versa, it doesn't, doesn't affect it, it's not, it's not relevant. What is relevant is what happens next, and this is what, what non-disjunction is referring to. As we move from metaphase 1 into anaphase 1, and therefore into telophase 1 and that first meiotic division, what happens is this. Normally, one of the homologous pairs of chromosomes would move to one of the poles and the other chromosome from the pair would move to the opposite. But, but what happens here in uh, anaphase 1 uh, is that the bivalent is not separated. It's not separated it stays, it stays together. So what that means is, is you end up with none of those chromosomes, no chromosome 21 in one of the daughter cells, and you have both chromosomes, 21, 
in the other. So I'm going to uh, show in this example that both of these chromosome 21s ends up in this right hand cell. Now again, I'm going to fast forward straight into metaphase 2 and so we have both chromosome 21s present in this cell. Now if you remember the chromosomes arrange themselves at right angles for the second myotic division compared to the first. You don't have any chromosome 21 in the other cell. The second myotic division takes place. And so what this means is in the in the four gametes, remember these are all gametes, the daughter cells produced, in these two gametes you would have one copy of each of the other chromosomes but you have no copies of chromosome 21 at all and in these two gametes instead of having just as you would expect to have one copy of each chromosome 21 you in fact have two copies of chromosome 21. The issue here then arises is what happens upon uh, fertilization. So let's say for argument's sake that these are uh, ova which have been produced in the ovaries. So when fertilization occurs, so here's a sperm not drawn to scale, um, and again, which, whether we had a matin or a pattern or chromosome here, is irrelevant. Let's say we're going to have um, pattern or chromosome. So the sperm's got the correct haploid number of chromosomes for chromosome 21. The issue is what happens when fertilization takes place. So normally we would have a homologous pair of chromosomes, but what happens now is we have three copies of chromosome uh, 21 it, within the zygote. So this condition where instead of having two copies of uh, a chromosome, a homologous pair of chromosomes, this is what's referred to as tri-3 somy chromosomes, trisomy. Um, and so you can get trisomy for any particular um, homologous pair of chromosomes. In this case, non-disjunction of chromosome uh, pair 21 leads to trisomy 21. Um, and this particular type of non-disjunction then, as I said, um, leads to this person developing uh, Down syndrome. There are other examples and uh, we have asked you to go and have a way, have a look at uh, other examples.